Hi. Now, you'd have to be living under a rock not to know that we're in the middle of one of the biggest property booms for a long time. Look, just open up any newspaper, watch the TV. You can't help but know that property values are going up almost daily. However, while some analysts are reporting extraordinary capital growth, there are others that are suggesting caution. By the way, it's not just the cranks and not the, and the nutty professors urging caution at present. In a recent insightful commentary, respected property analyst John Edwards, who's the CEO of Residex, suggests it's not all as it seems. In fact, he warns there are some significant areas of our property markets that are losing value, and he presents the figures to back up his claims. Now, we've got a summarised version of his article in the feature article in this month's property update. So you can click the feature article uh, on this newsletter website and you'll be able to find all about it. Now I respect the integrity of Residex's research data and it actually confirms what the team of Metropole's property strategists are also experiencing. So I take these warnings seriously. Before we examine this critical trend, Let's first look at some of the market data provided by Australian property monitors last week. Melbourne still remains the country's hottest property market, with a rise in the composite median house price to four hundred and sorry to five hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and eighty. In other words, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And according to Australian property monitors, that's up about twenty seven percent in the last twelve months. It's gone up six point eight percent in the last quarter alone. During the same period, the Sydney median house price increased by 14.7% to $609,353. While Brisbane was the only capital to report a fall in the median price in the last quarter, it was down just 0.1 of a percent. But overall, the median house price rose a respectable 9.1% in Brisbane in the last year. It went up to $451,388. In Perth, the median house price rose to $519,526. That was up 9.5, sorry, 9.4% for the year. So that shows the Perth market is moving, isn't it? The cycle's finally moving on there. Darwin recorded a 15.7% annual increase. So its values are up now, median price is up to $576,000, with Adelaide also recording a solid 12.1% increase to $449,704. In Hobart, saw solid price rises of 14.2% over the year to, to 318,119, while Canberra saw prices increase by 13.9% to 549,647. Australian property monitors also reported composite unit price grew over the last 12 months. Melbourne prices, unit prices went up 13.7%, Canberra 13%, Perth 11.3%, Sydney 10.4%, Adelaide 9.7%, Darwin 9.2%. So unit prices are doing well. Overall, the median unit price fell in Hobart, though, by about 4.5%. Now, with such strong results, why would anybody be cautioning us over our property markets? Well, Matthew Bell, the economist at Australian Property Monitors, explained that house price growth has started to slow. It slowed across the country in the March quarter as five interest rates hit, and now this week the government's brought out the sixth interest rate increase in the last little while. And of course, the expiry of the first homeowners boost also impacted on the lower end of the market. There hasn't been as much support there. His figures showed that all capital cities except Adelaide and Darwin saw the rate of growth of median house price fall in the March 2010 quarter compared to December 2009. So if the quarterly growth rate is moderating, why are annual growth rates still rising? Well, it's actually just the way the figures are worked out. They're compiled. So last year, we got rid of those lower March quarter figures and replaced them with this year's March 2010 quarter figures. So even though growth is slowing, overall the median price is still rising. That's just the way figures work. However, John Edwards of Residex has a different concern. He said, our Reserve Bank is not receiving disaggregated numbers, and hence it's probably not aware that there are sections of this market which are losing value, and others that are doing very poorly. John Edwards further went on to say, 
that the, in a number of the Reserve Bank reports, there were discussions of the high auction clearance rates, suggesting that they've taken into that into consideration in making their decisions. John Edwards said, I would caution that while auction clearance rates do tell something about the markets, they don't tell us, with the exception of Victoria, what the total market activity is doing. We shouldn't read too much into them. And all we should remember is that in most markets, less than 20% of sales go to auction, and that the lower cost properties have very low tendencies to be auctioned. Further, he said, clearance rates in the 70% range are not reflective of anything other than a normal market. He says a boom market will see consistent clearance rates better than 85%. Now, Residex has also recently released its March figures, and whilst the numbers are a bit different to those supplied by Australian mon property monitors, now of course this is nothing new in this, all research houses report different medium prices depending upon how they analyse the data and what figures they report, but even though the figures are different, their trend is basically the same. The Residex data shows that if you take a broad overview on an aggregate basis, as Residex calls it, our markets are doing very, very well. But Edwards points out that if you drill deeper into the figures, in some cities, in fact, some areas are doing quite poorly, with many suburbs where median house prices are falling in value. For example, in Brisbane in the last quarter, according to Residex, more than 53% of all suburbs were losing value, while in Sydney more than 20% of suburbs were losing value. Interestingly, the only city where there's no suburb which is falling in value is Melbourne. Digging deeper into the data, Edwards shows that in each city there's a tendency for the lowest cost suburbs to be the worst affected, in other words, prices going down. These suburbs are where there's a large proportion of first homeowners and those who've just maybe upgraded once. He warns that in these lowest cost suburbs, we tend to find the lowest level of equity and the highest loan to value ratios. And it's in these areas where borrowers are more at risk with their as home interest rates increase. And while there may be a little lag for a while, they will keep increasing. What all this means is what I've been saying for a while. We're experiencing a two speed market in all our capital cities. The overall figures hide the fact that strong capital growth is only being experienced in areas where people are better off than Mr. and Mrs. Average, as Edwards puts it. There's no sugarcoating it. Our current property markets are making some property owners very wealthy, while others are losing out. There's nothing really new about this, and this trend is going to continue. In some ways, it's the rich getting richer. Those who are financially fluent and understand how to play the property game will do very well over the next few years because I believe the underlying fundamentals will keep driving our property markets higher for another two or three years. This means that despite all the hype, you can't just buy any property at any price and hope to become wealthy. You need to buy the right property at the right price the right sort of property is one that's got a level of scarcity. That will, it'll mean that it'll always be in continuous strong demand by owner-occupiers, because they're the ones that keep pushing prices up, and by tenants, because they help subsidise your mortgage. So you've got to buy the right property in the right location, and to me that's one that's outperformed the long-term averages, and then at the right price. You've got to buy it in the right stage of the property cycle too, and that's in many cases in the right, in the, most of our states at the moment. So to become a successful investor, you'll need to surround yourself with a team of independent and unbiased professionals. A team who are known, proven and trusted, so it's probably an appropriate time for me to remind you that in changing markets like we're now experiencing, no one can help you quite like the independent property investment strategists at Metropole. Remember, we've got no properties for sale, but as buyers agents, we've got access to every property on the market. If you'd like to find out a bit more about what's happening in your local area and what our research is suggesting is in store, join us for a free property briefing in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane and with our affiliates in Western Australia in Perth. Just click on the link below to find out more and reserve your place.